All right. In uh, this lab, it, uh, we're going to use the conservation of angular momentum uh, to determine the mass of there. There's a large washer, and we want to determine the mass of that washer. So what we're going to do is we've got a base disk, and you're going to know the mass of this. We're going to give you that. And uh, here I'm identifying what we're calling the different pieces. There's a screw. And um, so uh, this is the drop disk. Uh, we don't know the mass of this. Uh, we're going to spin this. And of course, we're going to have the uh, angular velocity information. And uh, all right, so knowing the dimensions of that, uh, we should be able to determine the mass. And next, we're going to uh, take this is our, our, our large washer. And this is really what we want to know the mass of. All right, so we're going to take this uh, large washer and uh, spin it <coughs> and then uh, drop on top of it. Uh, the drop disk that we did in our previous experiment that we should have some information on now. And uh, from the inf information of the angular speed, we should be able to figure out what is the mass of that uh, the uh, large washer. All right, so here are here are our trials. This is the I'm calling uh, trial A the one with the uh, the uh, just the base disk and the drop disk. and um, after we uh, spin it and drop it, um, we go over to the Analyze screen on the LabQuest, and I'm just scrolling slowly, and you can see wherever the cursor is, it's giving the uh, angular speed, and uh, also we can see the time there on the graph. Um, you're going to have to determine uh, what information you're going to use to... Uh, to solve the problem of what is the mass of the large washer. All right, so I'm spinning it again. And when I'm dropping it, I'm careful um, to drop it cleanly. So the, uh, the drop disk is in no way in contact with anything else uh, except for my hand, and then I drop it, and then it plops right onto the, uh, the base disk. Angular momentum is only conserved as if there is no net torque uh, on the system. And in this case, uh, our system uh, uh, would be the, uh, the two disks. Uh, now the question is, is there a net torque on uh, the system? Um, could you calculate uh, th the net torque if there is one? And if there is one, uh, is it important? Can we still get good results even if there is a net torque on the system? Uh, obviously, if the net torque is very small compared to the values we're dealing with, um, there may be a net torque, and I'm sure there is. There's always uh, something going on. Um, but is it relevant? That's the question. Isn't The question isn't, is there absolutely a torque, uh, net torque on the system? Well, sure there is. Um, but is it relevant? How big is it? How important is it to get a good result? That's the question. Not, is there a net torque? Of course there is, right? So how could you use this information we're looking at to figure out what is the net torque on this system?
So uh, now we've uh, swapped out. We're on to uh, experiment B. Uh, this has, we have the uh, large washer on the bottom. And give that a spin. And we're going to drop the uh, drop disc on it, right? So um, we've done already done an experiment with the drop disc. Um, and uh, so we, we have some information on that. And uh, all right. So all we need is some dimensional information and uh, a little bit of mass information we should be able to determine the mass of the uh, the large washer All right, here's some masses. Here's the, the base disk, the mass of the base disk. And here's some mass and some other things. The screw. You may or may not need these. Washer hub. Uh, the hub. And uh, that's the end of the masses. Here are the, some dimensional measurements. All these measurements were made with the ruler over uh, across the diameter at the widest point. All right, good luck. Extreme Laboratory.